Let's try the sequence again, but this time we're going to use a different formula. We found one way that does work, but the flaw in that one is you need every answer to find a new one. What if I want to find A24? That one, if we used recursion, we would need 23 of the previous answers to find that one. So that's our goal, is to find A24. Okay, to find this new way, let's start with A2, which was 8. And how we got the number 8 was we took 3 and we added 5 to it. All right, so that shows us how we got A2. Then if we look above, instead of if we just write every step, let's look up here. To get A2, we only added 5 once. To get A3, we would have needed to add 5 twice. To get the next one, A4, then we would have needed to add 5 three times. To get A5, how many times do you think we would need to add 5? Four times. To get A6, can you guess? We would just do one more plus 5. So then we have 1 two, three, four, five times that we added five. To find a six, we would take the number three and then add on to it five times five. To find a seven, we would have taken the number three and added on to it six times five. find a 8, we would have taken 3 and added on to it 7 times 5. Can we see the pattern here? Maybe if I change this first one, you'll see it even more clearly. What's in common every time is whenever we want a new number, we're taking 3, we're going to add the number 5, and the number of times we do it depends on this number. We want to do it one less than n. We want to do it one less than n times. So that means that we want to do it n minus 1 times. And let's put this into one general formula. This formula is what we use for every arithmetic sequence. That formula would be a n is equal to the first number. That number 3 that we have in common up here, that's there because that was the first term. So the very first one matters. And then 5, 5 came from the common difference, because that was d. The common difference every between each of those numbers was d. And then we multiply d depending on this one. We didn't do it n times, we did it n minus 1 times. Let's use this to find a24, which was our original goal. To get a24, We're just going to fill in the things that we know. So we know that 3 is the first number. We're going to multiply by 1 less than the number 24, which is 23. And then d was 5. And then we can simplify this. a24 will equal 3 plus 5 times 20 is 100, 5 times 3 is 15, Add those together, you get 115. Add those two things together, 3 and 115, and you get 118.
All right, in these examples, the first thing you need to do is you're going to find the common difference. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. You need to find the common difference more than once, more than twice, because maybe it's not actually common. Maybe sometimes it changes. Okay, so D equals plus 2. Then, let's label these. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. We labeled them. That's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. To get to 10, what we did was we took the first one and we added the number 2 to it, right? To get to 14, we took the first one. And to get to 14 from 8, we would add 2 once, twice, that would make 12, three times. So to get to 14, and remember, 14 was the fourth term, we took the first one and we added two three times. Let's write that again, but with less equal signs in between. The general formula for that one, a n is eight plus n minus one times two. Let's see if number two has a common difference. This one's a minus 2, subtract 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. The common difference is minus 2. The formula is a n equals the first term, which is negative 4. That's the first one. Plus n minus 1 times negative 2. I just noticed I forgot to put a negative sign here. We were subtracting two. I know I went really slow in this video, but that's because in the past years, students have had trouble with this concept, so I wanted to take it extra slow.